Hey YouTube, thanks for coming by the Wildcat Comms channel today. Appreciate you stopping by to check us out. So you're thinking about putting a radio in your vehicle. Well, I've had radios in four of my vehicles, and so why don't you come with me while we talk about everything you need to know to get started from beginning to end, a few different considerations for power, antennas, portability, and you can learn some of the mistakes that I've made so you don't repeat them for yourself in the future. Come with me and we'll talk about it. Okay, as you're preparing to put your radio kit together for your vehicle, there's going to be a few things you're going to think about. First of all, what kind of radio should I get? What kind of antenna should I get? And how should I mount everything together? So as for a radio, uh, certainly radios like this Quan Shang, your Bofang, whatever uh, HT you're using, these are certainly portable, but they're not very powerful. This is 4 watts, and even with a good antenna um, that you could fairly easily connect to this, you're still only going to be pushing 4 watts. And antenna um, height and performance is uh, very important in the ham radio equation. And you don't want to think, uh, forget about power too. You want to forget to think about power. So uh, a mobile radio that you can put in your vehicle is going to be 45, maybe 50 watts. Um, significantly more powerful than 4 watts. It's also going to have a much richer feature set. Uh, you'll find options like cross-band repeat. Uh, which is going to be imperative in the field. What that is is that lets you use your mobile base station radio as a base station and you can repeat other signals from your handheld uh, while you're in the vicinity of your vehicle without having to be at your vehicle using your radio. So very powerful feature there, cross-band repeat. Uh, there's other features too that you'll want. The send and receive is a lot better. Um, you know, the internals are just a lot better on a mobile radio, but power and features are probably the most important. What kind of antenna should you think about? Well, if you can't permanently install the radio, you probably don't want to permanently install your antenna. And so a mag mount is going to be good for you in that regard. Uh, if you come from the Jeep world, um, or for some reason you just absolutely cannot put a magnet mount um, on your roof or drill into it, which is optimal, um, then yeah, you know, the Jeeps have uh, the swing out tire carrier racks. You see antenna mounts for those style things. You could put them on other, you know, the ladder racks in your truck or whatever. Um, you could certainly do that. Um, although again, you know, putting that antenna as high as possible with a good ground plane, meaning the roof of your car, uh, that's gonna give you optimal performance. The mag mounts though are removable. And so if you need to remove it um, either for stealth or because you can't permanently install it, that's great. If you need to quickly move your setup to another vehicle, um, a mag mount could be good for you there. Uh, there's a couple of different kinds. Um, the smaller one here uses uh, the same kind of connector that your HT will have. And uh, the slightly bigger one here uses uh, a, a connector that you'll find on the back of your mobile radio. So depending on your needs, there's a million different magnetic mount options for you. Uh, but again, I would consider getting uh, a hole drilled in there. Upfitters, vehicle upfitters are where you want to go. They're the folks that wire up the uh, fire trucks, ambulances, police cars, municipal vehicles. You just call your local fire department, police station, municipality, state police, ask them where are they sending their cars to get wired up. And uh, you call those folks, tell them you're a ham and you want to get, uh, get some antennas and, and uh, radio mounted in there. They'll know exactly what to do. You're going to get an NMO mount, Nancy, Mike, Oscar, and uh, they'll get you set up. A few hundred bucks. I've had it done on three of the four vehicles I've had radios in. It's definitely worth it. Uh, a buddy of mine drilled a hole in the roof of his brand new Tacoma. Did a great job, but that's a lot bolder than I want to be. <laughs> so um, I've opted to just have a few hundred dollars well spent uh, for professionals who wire these vehicles up all day long. They're not afraid to, um, you know, take the panels off, work around airbags, all that kind of stuff. Everything's all good. Now, the setup that I have here is a good blend, I think, between power and portability. After all these years, I've kind of developed um, a little shelf for the radio that I can use to very quickly take it in and out of my vehicle. I have everything kind of as modular as possible. I'll show you that in a second, um, you know, in terms of power. And um, I have a really cool setup that allows me to have um, even an HF radio powered by my truck. Uh, because I've got Anderson power poles coming from the battery block. Okay, so that's cool. Um, the only other thing you're going to want to think of is how you're going to wire it all up. And uh, whether or not you um, can permanently mount the radio in, uh, power is going to be something that you want to have 
uh, as good a handle on as possible. And what I mean by that is certainly you can get one of these cigarette adapters for your mobile radio. And in my experience, they will work sometimes. Um, but there are other times where when you go to transmit, um, there just won't be enough power and the radio will reset. Um, you will not be able to transmit. And so that could be really bad for you. If you just need a listening station, um, I think you could count on this 100% of the time. But if you need to talk, um, I would say maybe 50% of the time. And the other thing to consider too is that uh, many of these only work when the vehicle is running. Uh, and so if that's not an option for you, this isn't going to work either. Uh, but what I would definitely recommend doing is uh, wiring it up as permanently as possible. This will give you uh, the best isolation from electrical interference as possible. Um, you want to run it right off the battery. Um, and the setup that I've got, I'll show you in a bit, you know, I can even use this adapter here um, to plug my HF into the Anderson power pole and I can be running um, either of my HF vehicle uh, radios out of this vehicle too. So let me show you the radio and how it's set up and we'll go from there. Okay, now before we show you the radio and how that's set up, I'll show you the faceplate. I used to have a suction cup mount for this thing. Uh, that's my Kenwood TMV 71A Tango Mike Victor 71 Alpha. This is a great radio. I've got two of them, uh, one in each of my vehicles right now currently, um, and one that I take back and forth from my camper van to my shack. So it's my main shack radio as well. Um, and basically, I had a mag, uh, excuse me, a suction cup mount right here. Uh, that's completely unnecessary, I found out. Uh, this just sits right here, um, just like this, totally fine. Um, just kind of wedged up against here. It's not even really jammed in or anything. I've had no problems. I'm off-road, I'm on-road, everything's good there. Um, the wires come uh, to this connector down through here, okay, along the floorboards and into the back seat. And this is where I have it mounted. And just to give you some idea of what that looks like here. So this is the back seat of the truck. And uh, basically if you lift this up and drop the seat, that's where my radio lives. It keeps it out of the way. Some things to consider. Guys are mounting them under the dash and I have done that uh, in my camper van. Guys are mounting them under the seat and that's fine too. Uh, if you do that, you don't necessarily need um, an auxiliary speaker, uh, but if you're in the Jeep world and you're thinking about flooding uh, or swamping out the truck, you don't want a radio under the seat because um, the floor is the first place it's going to get wet, man. Let me tell you, if you've ever swamped your Jeep, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so this bad boy is on a shelf, and I'll remove this in a minute after we go over everything, but um, you can see here the antenna mounted on the roof, real nice by these guys. And uh, I have a cap that comes off and goes on it. But yeah, you know, just a standard setup right in the middle of the roof. So I'm getting a good ground plane. And then uh, the antenna wire comes up through here. Everything kind of comes up through here. I've got an auxiliary speaker. And this goes uh, under the seat. Uh, I have it basically just bolted in under one of the seat bolts. I'll show you that up front. Uh, and then this guy here is a great addition. This is a relay that goes to the battery and so after I think 15 minutes um, it will cut off power to the radio so I can use the radio for 15 minutes after the battery uh, the, the car the truck is off and that way I don't run the battery down if I want to uh, go longer after 15 minutes I just have to turn the truck on for another few minutes so that prevents me from running the battery down which is kind of imperative in this setup I don't have a secondary battery under the hood yet okay let me pop the hood and I'll show you how it's wired up. Okay, super clean setup. The wires come up front here and um, they're fused individually. They're hardwired in. Um, that's exactly how you want this to look on your truck as well. Going to ground. This way, um, I've got some good power and I know it's gonna last as long as the battery. In a perfect world, I would put the, tool, the dual two battery setup in here. I'm trying to do that soon. There's that. So yeah, there you have it. I can very quickly um, disconnect the 
Anderson power poles, the antenna, and the auxiliary speaker. I can take the radio out just by unscrewing it from this little bracket here. And if I wanted to, I can uh, disconnect these Anderson power poles and connect this wire, which would let me run my HF rig. Let's take a look at the auxiliary speaker before we wrap up. So here under the front driver's seat, I've got an auxiliary speaker mounted and basically it's just, I drilled a hole through the metal bolt and I put it through uh, the bolt that holds the, the seat in. Nothing special. Wire goes um, under the seat, down through the panels to the back. All right, so that's wiring up a ham radio in your vehicle 101, basically. Um, you know, you ask 10 different guys, there's gonna be 10 different answers, but um, those are the basics, uh, things to think about. You know, do I need to have portability? If not, go for power. My final uh, piece of advice, I guess, is to buy once, cry once, right? Pay once, cry once. Um, go to an upfitter. Everything will be done perfectly. Yeah, you'll pay a few hundred dollars, but they do it right the first time. Um, you might spend all weekend jacking around with different things or figuring out the best way to mount it in your particular vehicle. Uh, and these guys do that all day, five days a week. Um, so I would just turn it over to them and let them be the experts at that, especially if you're going to drill a hole in your roof and run wires, um, you know, around curtain airbags or whatever's going on in some of these new vehicles. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I trust the experts, but think about all of these things. I appreciate, um, you know, the different comments that'll happen. Comment section is usually pretty fired up, which I appreciate. Um, so if you got a suggestion or a question, hit up the comments. If you found this video helpful in any way, like, subscribe, appreciate that. Leave a thumbs up. As always, thanks for checking out the Wildcat Comms channel. Appreciate you stopping by.